Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk a little more about some drumsticks that I make. I did a video like this, I think, last year, and I've gotten lots and lots of questions since then about the sticks. And I know a lot of you have bought sticks. I really appreciate that, and I hope you're enjoying them. So right here you see uh, some of the sticks that I've made for myself, and these are sticks I use for all kinds of different things, and different woods, different kinds of tips, different weights, so today we're going to discuss what I used them for and answer, uh, you know, about a dozen questions that you all asked about the sticks. So let's get to that first. Uh, the number one question that I get is, can I use these sticks for drum set? And the answer is, yes, you can. But the other answer is, uh, they're very expensive. So, you know, you're going to probably dent them up if you do rim shots and hit the cymbals. So if you're okay with that, then that's fine. But, you know, th these sticks at the cheapest are about five times the cost of a regular pair of maple or hickory drumsticks. So if you're wealthy and you can afford that, then by all means, use them for drum set. Uh, one of the tips that I like for drum set is over here. And these are Black Wenge, we'll see if we can get a little close up here. I bought a, a new little cheap camera, so hopefully it's gonna work okay for this video. And these are what I call a, uh, a diamond tip or a longer tip. And Black Wenge is a wood that uh, can be extremely hard. And the way this wood works, it's interwoven fibers. So when you put it on the lathe, it's hard to make a thinner stick because as you get thinner, the stick will vibrate because it's so hard on the lathe, and then that cutter will cut into the fibers and tear out. So it's kind of precarious to make these thin. But I do make them from time to time for people who really want them for drum set because they're so cool looking. As you see, they're beautiful. And this tip is a tip that works really well on cymbals. It's close to the tip of my drum set stick that Vic Firth makes for me. Uh, but not exactly like it. So the problem is making really small tips on these kinds of woods is that once again, they will tear out as you get smaller and smaller. All of a sudden you'll spend an hour or an hour and a half making a stick or a pair of sticks. And then all of a sudden it'll tear out and then, well, that's over. Got to start all over. It's very frustrating. So there's a limit to how small I can make tips with certain kinds of woods. So these are black wenge, and I can make this tip uh, using most any woods I have, except for bloodwood, purple heart, and um, zebra wood is very difficult because that those grains are really wide. So that becomes a problem. I can try to do it, but it's going to cost you more. So yes, you can use them for drum set, but once you smash, you know, the cymbal or or the rim, it's going to cause a dent. It will, and these are hard woods, so they might even dent your cymbal. And the other issue is that they will no longer match in weight once you take a chunk out of them. So something to think about. All right, next question. Uh, do you weigh the sticks? Of course I weigh the sticks. I have a very sensitive scale. I do it in grams. That's how I measure the weight of sticks. Just to give you an example, a pair of my sticks that Vic Firth makes for me these are uh, the model that Vic Firth makes for me. They're not available to the general public, but basically it's a cross between an SD9 and an SD2, which is a Bolero, uh, with a few modifications. So back in the 80s, uh, Neil Larravee was the head of the artistic um, department, and I worked with him. Great guy. I think he's in charge of the whole company now. I'm not sure about that. But... Uh, he was nice enough. We made kind of a deal. I was doing some clinics for them and they made me a stick. So I love this stick. I use it and they sent me enough sticks to last the rest of my life, but I do not sell them and they're not available. But I can make you a stick like this uh, on the lathe that's similar to it. Uh, but again, if you're wondering, it's a cross between an SD9 and a SD2 Bolero tip. And it's a little bit longer, just a hair. And the neck is a little bit different, so 
that's the difference. Now, uh, these sticks are around, you know, 55 grams average. Of course, they all differ because it's wood and it's all going to be different. As a comparison to that, these other set sticks that I showed you earlier, the Black Wenge, these sticks are uh, probably around 63 grams, so quite a bit heavier because the wood is dense. And even though maple is a hard wood, North American wood, these South American and African woods are much, much heavier as a general rule, almost all of them. Anyway, so uh, I do weigh the sticks because that's how I figure out how to get a matched pair uh, from them. And it's very important to me. And normally I try to get uh, right on the nose, which is hard to do with, a, you know, two pieces of wood. But I get within one or two grams normally uh, or on the nose of each stick being exact the same weight. And the next uh, question was, do you pitch match the sticks? And the answer to that is, yes, I do. I do pitch match them to the best of my ability. Uh, I have a, a little metal piece of, well, a piece of metal on a piece of rubber that I use in the shop. And I also test them on a pad. And it's important to use the same hand when you do that. If you use a different hand, that's actually pretty close. But a lot of times if you use a different hand, the pitch of the stick is going to be different, especially if you play traditional because there's less fingers on the stick. So don't worry about that. That's not going to you know, make or break anything. But yes, I try to get the sticks matched almost exactly, well, exactly in pitch. And you can use uh, sort of a tuner for that, but it's not really accurate. I just use my ear, which I think is pretty good, and a piece of metal. Uh, you know, and now the metal is dampened on a piece of rubber. So if you want to do that with some sticks, that's how you do a very thick piece of metal. I would say at least a quarter of an inch. I have a half inch piece of metal, uh, steel, and then on a piece of rubber, which isolates it. And then that's what you use, and you hear the tick, and if it's the same pitch, you know it. Now, one of the issues I do want to talk about today also that wasn't necessarily a question is that a lot of times you can go through making a pair of sticks out of a beautiful, expensive piece of wood and you make the sticks, everything's going great, you're so excited and you play and one of the sticks is what I call a dead stick. So somewhere in that wood is a spot that's dead. This happens with marimba bars too. Uh, it's very common that you can't see it. And you can't tell until you play with it or play on it, as in the marimba bar. And at that point, you just have to start all over. They're dead. And I've made hundreds of pairs of sticks like that where they're beautiful looking, but you can't use them because one is dead and the pitch is a lot lower than. There could be a little knot in there or any little thing. Of course, you know, you're dealing with wood and it's, it's an organic substance, so it's all going to be different. So this is an example of a dead pair of sticks. This is a beautiful spalted zebra wood, which is so rare, you would not believe it. I'll see if I can give you a little close up of that. So I was so excited when I got this. When you cut it open, I get them in planks of wood and you cut them open, you see that, you know, it's almost like ambrosia. Um, they call it ambrosia maple, which is what you, you've probably seen. But you do get it in exotic woods every once in a while and get a nice burl or something. And, and I get so excited and then I make the pair of sticks <laughs> and one of them's dead. So I'll give you an example of that. You hear the difference? So the one that's dead has the uh, kind of ambrosia spalting on it. And that's common for that kind of spalting for the stick to be dead because of course that does something, I guess, to the wood, to the fibers. That's the spalted. That's the solid. Same piece of wood, but a different you know, stick, different part. And usually this takes place over small amounts of wood. So then if I would play, it's very minute, but I feel it. And I would not sell these, except as a display pair. And I do sell these as displays because they're so beautiful. So if any of you are interested, I do some cheaper. Normally they're around $50 a pair. Otherwise I just keep them because they're so pretty. And I would not necessarily play with these, and I wouldn't recommend you do it either. And I don't sell them. I would never send a pair of sticks out like this for someone to play with because, you know, it's not right. One of them isn't solid. Now, unfortunately, a lot of drum companies do that. They, they'll make sticks and send anything out. And I see that more and more these days because wood is becoming scarce. Uh, no, no drum companies really make sticks out of these kinds of woods except for persimmon 
and maybe uh, oak or ash that I have here and I'll show you later. But even the maple, the hickory and the persimmon that's left is of such low quality that, you know, my students bring these sticks into lessons and I, oh, I'm always curious about sticks, obviously. And I check them out, it's like, oh my God, what the heck is going on with these things? So uh, I think there is an issue with wood now. In the old days, it was, it was very plentiful. I mean, I have some really old Vic Firth sticks and I am not mocking on Vic Firth or any, anybody, but the old ones that I have from, from you know, the 70s, when I first started playing, are so much more dense. Uh, and it's even, the maple is bird's eye maple, which is beautiful. And now it's, it's kind of this really light cleared lighter maple which is fine you just use a heavier model stick if you want but it is different now these particular sticks here are uh 30 years old these are the originals i pulled these out from the box they sent me so these are much more solid and the last batch i got from them was probably um i don't know maybe 10 years ago uh and they were much lighter so that is a problem that's happening okay so i wandered off again but i hope <laughs> i hope i answered that question um, what wood is the best and the prettiest? Well, that's two questions, but I'll try to answer that. There is no best wood. There are woods that favor drumsticks much better than others, of course. So we'll just take a look at that quickly. Uh, the woods that are the best for playing, in my opinion, are uh, leopard wood, which are these. So that makes a great drumstick. And they are beautiful as well. It's a perfect combination. It's a very hard wood, but it feels great. Great for ornamental stuff. Heavy, okay? These are uh, kind of heartwood. Now the heartwood means it's in the, from the center of the tree and it's gonna be a little darker and heavier. On some woods like zebra wood, like this, this is the heartwood, and you see how much darker it is than the sticks the zebra wood I just showed you. It's pretty noticeable there. Let's see if we can get a close-up. And uh, it's going to be probably about five to ten grams heavier than the sapwood, the outer part of the tree. Now heartwood is extremely expensive extremely expensive and hard to get. So I'm always searching for wood. I mean, literally, I have people all over the country that I buy from and keep their eyes out for me and they call me up and you know, it's not uncommon to spend $100 on a piece of wood that's, you know, two inches thick by 24 inches long, which will basically get me, you know, four pair, uh, two pairs of sticks when it's all said and done. So you see how heavy that is. So if I do, if you do want heartwood, I'm just letting you know, it's going to be extremely expensive. I did have a bunch of this and those of you who bought it, congratulations, because it's all gone. Um, I had a lot of it. I'm trying to hunt for more. I made myself a couple pairs and sold about maybe 10 pairs of these zebra wood heartwood, but uh, it is gone. It's it, again, I'm, I may never see it again. So anyway, the leopard wood is a good stick and zebra wood, heartwood is amazing. And the sap wood for zebra wood uh, is great as well, although it's a frustrating wood to use, as I said earlier, because it tears out. And also it's hard to match a pair of sticks, but it's also beautiful. So the most beautiful and best woods, I would say would be leopard wood and uh, zebra wood. Now, wenge, black wenge is a beautiful wood, obviously. It's so cool, there's really no other wood besides ebony, like it, maybe coca bolo a little bit. That's a little too hard and expensive to make a stick. But the thing about wenge, it's a difficult stick to use for drumsticks, again, because that open grain tears out. And these can be a gorgeous feeling and looking stick. This is a very large barrel tip pair, as you can see. I might have showed you these in the first video. I can't remember what I showed you. All right, so those are the three woods that I love. Now, another great stick for, uh, a great wood for making drumsticks is persimmon. It's pretty much the best North American hardwood you can use for making sticks. Fortunately, like I said, it's becoming really rare. I was super lucky about 
three or four years ago, I found a persimmon tree, the biggest one I've ever seen. It was that big around. And I told the guy who had it, if he ever gets rid of it, uh, call me. And he did. He called me. I couldn't believe it. A year later or so, and he cut it down, and I sliced it up into planks. And I have enough wood now. It's all dry. It's 5%, which is perfect. It's all dry now, and so I can make persimmon sticks now. And um, I have enough wood to make again, probably about a couple thousand pairs over the rest of my life. So this is gorgeous wood. Now it is going to be lighter than a normal uh, exotic hardwood. They always are. So uh, generally persimmon is going to come in around anywhere from 60 to 70 grams. I do have some heartwood, but I haven't cut into that yet. I'm waiting for that to dry a little more. That's the last part of the tree to dry. Uh, it's in the kiln now. Should probably be dry, dry in about six months completely. 5% is hard to get to. Uh, you know, you got to really dry it out in the kiln for almost a year to get that dry. And that, you know, that makes sure the stick won't check, which means crack. It won't warp. These are perfectly straight, as you see, all my sticks are. So I'm really, really careful. I ran into that when I was younger and started making sticks. And I didn't know too much about that. And I had all kinds of problems. The sticks would bend. It was a nightmare. So I learned really quick. And now I'm kind of an expert on drying wood. So, And uh, th this, these are the, some of the first persimmon sticks that came from that tree. And I've started selling them. And they are gorgeous. And they feel great. And these particular sticks are 64 grams, which is perfect for a concert stick and, and good for a workout stick. Although I prefer my practice sticks, pad sticks to be in the 70 to 80 gram range. All right, so persimmon's another really good wood. Also oak is a pretty wood. This is white oak, which tends to be a little more expensive than red oak. And this makes a good stick. Harder to get, and I don't make a lot of sticks from this. Other pretty woods include um, Paduk or sometimes Bloodwood, which is a red wood like this. This is a special tip that I just made for someone, and I'm sending these out. That's, so that's, those are the sticks that are my that I have in stock, uh, the woods, pretty much all the time, and they make a great stick. All right, next question. What wood is the heaviest? Uh, what is heartwood? Well, we already, already talked about heartwood, but the heaviest wood that I use is ebony and it's expensive. It's going to cost you at least $100 for a pair of barrel tip sticks, which is a lot of money. So uh, they're super heavy. They're almost 100 grams. And I would not suggest ever using a stick that heavy. You're probably going to hurt yourself. But again, there's people out there. I guess they're like the Incredible Hulk and they wanted some, so I bought some. And they came out beautiful, but I could barely play them. They were so heavy. And it's a very, very heavy, dense wood. So that's the heaviest wood I'll use that actually can make a decent stick. Uh, like I said before, the heartwood of any tree will make a heavier, denser stick. Uh, leopard wood is generally the heaviest thing that I can have in stock. And I have it in stock right now that I can make an 80 gram stick. You don't want to use anything over 80 grams, you will hurt yourself. And I use 80 gram sticks to just warm up every day. Doing stuff like that, just getting my hands going and letting the stick do the work, the weight. But I don't use those for general playing. And if you do, you're probably gonna get tendonitis. I talked about all this in my health and wellness videos, but be careful. So I'll start with a heavier stick. Uh, like 80, then move to 70s, you know, concert stick, and then move to my drum set stick if I'm playing drum set that day. And that's how I do it. That's how I warm up. Okay. Um, so that's the heaviest stick that I normally make, leopard wood, 80 grams. From time to time, I'll find another wood that's heavy, heartwood. And, you know, if you're interested, I can let you know what I got at a specific time. All right. Do you have a favorite pair? Um, that, that's a good question. So... I don't. You see, these are all the sticks that I have for myself that I've made as kind of test models and to make sure they all work and for people with different tips. Uh, the sticks I use the most are uh, these leopard wood barrel tip. They're kind of medium tips. I use them for, if you've watched my concert snare drum videos, 
um, you know, I'll use them for that. These are heavier ones. And I also have a zebra wood pair that I use. These are about 70 to 74 grams, somewhere around there. And I use these on orchestral snare drum, especially calf heads, because they really bring out the depth. I love that sound, as you know, if you've watched my videos. I love the sound of a calf head. And I'm not really into that really high, ticky, uh, you know, concert snare drum sound that everybody uses. In the old days, when I was growing up, the snare drum sounds were lower sounding. It wasn't so high. All the guys that I idolized, you know, Buster Bailey and, you know, my own teacher, Fred Hinger and, you know, different guys like that. Mickey Bookspan from the Philadelphia Orchestra. They all used, um, their sound was a lower kind of sound and calf a lot of times. And I fell in love with that sound. So if you watch the Mitchell Peters series I'm doing now on his advanced snare drum book, I'm using a calf head and these, these uh, leopard wood sticks or sometimes these zebra wood. So I'd have to say those are my favorite because I've used them, these particular sticks I've used for 20 something years now. They're, they're dented and broken in and you know, you can probably see they're in great shape. But And these tips, if you take care of them, will last forever. Now, one thing I did want to mention, if you do play on a coated head, an ambassador, or God forbid, a mesh head, I've seen this, the actual tips will get sanded down. Uh, they will end up to, as nubs because the wood is so hard that that works against you when you're playing on uh, a coated head or a mesh head. You, know, you don't want to play on mesh anyway, okay? So don't use these sticks on mesh heads. Now you're going to use them on coated heads. And what I do, I take a fine piece of sandpaper, like three to 400 grit, when I get a new head and I just sand it down, just lightly. And I'm not going to normally play brushes on my concert heads, all right? If I was, I wouldn't do that. It'll sand down itself as you play the brush on that head. But, uh, but I do that right away with a Diplomat, a coated Diplomat, or Evan Strata or whatever. And so it doesn't sand down my tips over time because it will do that. And the harder the stick, the more sanding that's going to take place in my experience. Okay, so those are my personal favorites, but your mileage may vary. This, all these feel great. Oh, I also love these Tiger Wood sticks. I love these sticks. I don't use them enough, but they are heavy, 76 grams. And I am out of tiger wood. I can't find any, so I'll get some more at some point. All right. Um, can you use any wood to make sticks? No, you cannot. Most, most wood will not make a good drumstick. Uh, you can pick up a pair of uh, walnut sticks. Nope, won't work. I tried it. Walnut's a beautiful wood. I'll make you a pair of display sticks out of walnut. Uh, not good. Cherry, another thing. Too light. Not good. I have pairs of cherry sticks that I experiment with. Not good. Um, the best woods I already talked about for sticks are maple, hickory, persimmon, and all these exotic woods I already talked about, which no one else really does. Okay, but um, the best drumstick wood in North America is persimmon. Now, pecan is something I'm experimenting with. It's kind of like hickory. It's in the hickory family, but it's prettier. And I just got a bunch of pecan, uh, found a dead tree and cut it up and I'm waiting for it to dry and we'll see what happens with that. I think it's going to be good though. It's got the right properties. The weight is about 55. Uh, that's a good weight. If you look uh, at the Janka scale, which is a hardened scale, it's going to be a pretty hard wood and that's what you want. The harder, the better. Light, light woods like pine, forget it. Cedar, forget it. Too light. Uh, even walnut, which is a hard wood. Nope. Mahogany, nope. Too light. That's a hard wood. Poplar, no, it's ugly and it won't work. It's good for, you know, building things, but uh, not for drumsticks. So yes, there's lots of woods that will not work. I've pretty much got that down at this point. What's the difference between different tips? Good question. Lots of difference. As most of you know, I love a barrel tip. Now, the reason I like the barrel tip is because I feel like it adds more weight in one spot. So for playing rudimental music, anything on a field drum, even orchestral music, um, with the orchestra, I use lots of different kinds of sticks for those. A lot of times with the orchestra, I will use an elongated tip like this. This is a pair of zebra wood diamond tip. And I can make these for you. It's a custom tip. It's going to be a little more expensive. It takes a while to make this kind of tip. It makes rolling a little bit easier. Although you can roll very nicely with a barrel tip if you're good. 
you work on it and you can do it. And the articulation you get with a barrel tip is second to none because again, it's pointed. So I find playing soft so much easier with a barrel tip stick. All right, so there is a difference between tips. Uh, even when you play drum set, there's a difference. If you use an elongated tip, and if you watch my cymbal video where I show you all my cymbals, I use three different kinds of tips. Nylon, uh, and then I use the 5A, and then I use my stick. And you can really hear the difference that gets. So a longer tip is going to give you a more spread sound, where a tip like my drum set stick is going to give you a very controlled, tight, articulate sound. Great for the old Ks or any symbol like that that's hammered and thin. Gives you a lot of articulation. So that's the tip I prefer. So there is a difference between tips, so I definitely recommend experimenting with that. Uh, okay, what's the difference between marching sticks and your sticks? So this is the last question. Uh, here's the difference between marching sticks. So some people say, hey, if I want an 80 gram stick, I'll just get a set of Ralph Harmon sticks and that'll be it. Well, the problem with marching sticks is they're thick, like that thick, three quarters to seven eighths, which is really thick. Most all of my sticks are five eighths, which is a really good thickness for a concert stick, for me anyway. So that's, um, that's what I believe. So if you look at my drum set stick and this stick, it's exactly the same thickness, exactly. And so the reason I started using uh, these hardwoods all those years ago to make sticks is that I like my drum set stick, but I didn't, I wanted a heavier stick. And for concert playing, I had the reamer sticks, which I love, and some other sticks that I use. But even with persimmon, the reamer sticks were too light for me at times. And he even had to make those a little thicker, like closer to uh, seven eighths or not seven eighths, uh, three quarters to make them heavier. I think it was the Allen Abel model that was a little thicker. So I didn't like that thickness. Even that eighth of an inch kind of messed with my fulcrum. So what I tried to do is find a heavier wood and so began the search of years and years of experimenting and making sticks and, and doing all those kinds of things so I can actually get a stick for myself. This didn't start as a business or anything to make sticks for people. I just wanted sticks that would fulfill what I needed. So that thickness really, really worked well for me, a five eighths or a little below that. And then I had the same thickness as my drum set stick, which I'm so used to, but I had it for concerts. So my hand was completely relaxed. As you open up your hand, your fingers like this, to use a bigger stick, everything changes. And to prove that, just pick up a pair of marching sticks and play a little, and then pick up a pair of regular sticks, and you'll see right away. It's the thickness of the stick, the diameter, that's so important to me. So that's the difference between a marching band stick and uh, the sticks that I make right there. So keep your questions coming. I hope this helped. Uh, we'll go through these woods right now for you. I'll point them out because that was another thing that people wanted to see what they look like. So we can do this quickly. Uh, hopefully this camera will pick all this up. These right here are leopard wood, heartwood. This is zebra wood, heartwood. Oh, really quick. These are reverse tip leopard wood. I made a pair of these for someone to copy an old stick that's no longer made, and I loved them. <laughs> so, so I made a pair for myself, and I can make a pair for you too. Um, they're going to be a little extra because it's a custom tip, but uh, so these are I call these reverse tip. They're really cool. They look like they wouldn't be good, but I love them. They're great. Great for rolls too. So that's leopard wood. This is regular zebra wood with elongated tip. This is ash, a really cool wood. And you see there, I was just screwing around and I made a little shoulder there. I don't know why I did that, but they feel good. And then this is tiger wood, which I'm out of. And uh, sometimes tiger wood is very decorative. These particular ones were the heartwood. A few little decorative things there. It's very brown and a solid stick. See, if you do that, that's not the way to pitch match because you can get anywhere on the stick. 
So if you're pitch matching your sticks like that, don't do it. And this is yellow heart that hasn't yellowed yet because I just cut it. I just made these. These are really nice. A yellow heart, not a real pretty wood. It's a yellow, but it makes a great drumstick. Some people love yellow though, and these will turn really yellow soon. So I, I don't finish them until they turn yellow. And this is like I told you, these are, um, I believe, Bloodwood. And that's, I'm sending these out next couple days. Beautiful wood. So that's Bloodwood. This is White Wenge. I think I showed you these in the last video. I have none of this left. And I ordered some recently, and it was crap. And I was so disappointed. I couldn't send it back because I already cut it up. So it's going in the fireplace. But um, I couldn't use it. It was just bad wood. Sometimes that happens. It's like gambling. Anyway, these are nice, though. These are really old. So white wenge as compared to black wenge, which is that. Same grain, different wood. And then here, these are... Oh, oops. Oh, yeah, got to be careful. This is canary wood. I just showed you that. And this right here is purple heart. Showed you these. And black wenge. Showed you these. And these are ambrosia or spalted zebra wood. Not selling these because, well, if someone wants these as a display pair, I will sell them to you. But I wouldn't use them because one is dead. That one. You know the difference, okay? And black wenge again with an elongated tip. And um, th this is, um, oh yeah, white oak. And finally persimmon, the newest member of my stick family. Beautiful. I look forward to making a lot of these. So that's it. And like I said, keep your questions coming. And uh, thank you to everyone who's bought these sticks. And sometimes I get backed up by a couple weeks. I am backed up right now by two weeks. And I can't make sticks every day because it kills my hands. So I make them once a week. And then I just fill orders. And that's pretty much it. So if you're interested, just contact me and we'll get you all set up. Take care.